Welcome. This video is a lesson from our DIY Pardot implementation course. If you're looking to get a new Pardot org set up and installed correctly, and you're looking for a little bit of extra help, consider taking our course. We'll walk through those steps with you in videos just like this one to make sure everything is installed and set up properly. I hope this video helps. The link is in the description below. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your tracker domain in Pardot and get the right DNS entries added to your domain. So we already set up the sending domain and we talked about why that's important. We need to authorize Pardot to send emails on behalf of that domain. Tracker domains are a little bit different. The purpose of a tracker domain is twofold. One is to white label your links and the assets that you have within Pardot. The second is to set up first party tracking when we add that JavaScript code a little bit later in our course. So the first one, white labeling links, there's a default domain for anything that you upload to Pardot. It's go.pardot.com. And if you don't set up tracking domains here, then that's what they're gonna see. So if you upload an image or say a PDF to Pardot, then it's gonna be hosted at go.pardot.com forward slash a bunch of letters and numbers. But that's not your brand and your customers probably have no idea what Pardot is. So it's a better idea to set up your own brand as a tracker domain so that that PDF would be hosted at go.hayestudio.com. And you can actually put anything you want before the domain. So any subdomain would work just fine. It could be marketing.hayestudio.com or hey.hayestudio.com or anything like that. And so that's white labeling. The other place where that shows up is in your links within emails. So whenever you send an email from Pardot, it rewrites all of the links to be unique. That's how it knows when an individual person clicks on a specific link, because that's a unique link in that email message. If you don't have this set up, all those links are gonna say go.pardot.com forward slash, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That white labeling, that branding piece is important, although not critical. And then the second purpose of this is setting up first party tracking for your JavaScript code. I mentioned this in an earlier video when we're going through account settings and you could check the boxes for first party or third party tracking. And this is referring to the tracking code generator down here. If we don't set up a domain that matches the domain of our website where you wanna track traffic, then it's going to be a third party cookie. The JavaScript code itself is going to refer to pardot.com instead of, in my case, hayesstudio.com. And from a browser's point of view or a plugin's point of view, that's gonna look like an advertisement on that page, like a banner ad or maybe Facebook's tracking code or something like that. And most web browsers are gonna start blocking those third-party cookies. And it's gonna start preventing that JavaScript from running and capturing data about the user that's navigating across those pages. First-party tracking is an exception. So if that code is actually referring to heystudio.com and the website it's put on is also heystudio.com, that's first party. They're the same. And that's a much higher level of trust. And so most browsers and extensions and those sorts of things are not going to be blocking tracking or JavaScript code that is first party. Because in many cases, that data is important for improving the experience on the website or sometimes for even making the website work. You might need to run that code. So that's why it tends to be run automatically, or at least it's not blocked out of hand. So if you want to improve the likelihood that you'll be able to see traffic on your website and see what pages they're viewing, then absolutely you must set up this tracker domain so that you can then generate the tracking code at the bottom here that matches whatever website that code is gonna run on. I hope that's a helpful explanation for why this is important. Now let's go through the steps of actually getting it set up. Click add tracker domain in the upper right hand corner and go ahead and write in whatever that subdomain of your primary domain you'd like for tracking purposes. Pardot suggests go.example.com, but again, you could put anything in place of the words go. And then choose your default campaign. I always choose the website tracking campaign that we created earlier in the process. But you could also have multiple tracking domains. You could have multiple website tracking campaign records as well in the system. And that'll come in handy later when you're trying to filter out one website's traffic versus another. So I've already added mine, it's go.heystudio.com. And now we need to add two records to make this work. The first record is a CNAME record. So this is the first time we're adding something other than a text record. And the CNAME record forwards traffic. So when somebody goes to go.heystudio.com, 
they're going to get forwarded essentially to go.pardot.com. And then from there, Pardot knows which asset to serve it or which link to eventually forward it onto. So we're going to add that CNAME record. Uh, and then we're also going to add a text record with this red value here as well for a final piece of security. And one thing to note, when you're adding that CNAME record, it is essentially redirecting traffic. So you don't, you don't want to be using this subdomain for anything else. If go.heystudio.com was currently taking people to a portal or some other destination, we would not want to use it, would not want to update or add the CNAME record because they're no longer going to be going to whatever that destination was. They're going to be redirected essentially to Pardot and Pardot assets that we're going to create. So if that's the case, just create a new subdomain and then you'll be good to go. So we come back to my zone editor here. I'm going to add a record and this is going to be a CNAME record here. And I'll type in go.heystudio com and the destination is going to be go.pardot.com that will be the case for any of your standard production orgs i think in mine it's probably a little bit different here yeah i've got go.demo.pardot.com so that's what i'm going to put in here but you should put go.pardot.com you shouldn't have the demo included save that c name record Let's add one more record. This one is going to be at the top level domain. So this will be at hayesstudio.com, not go.hayesstudio.com. So follow that same pattern for you. And then we're going to add a text record and we'll copy this code right here. Come back to the DNS editor and paste. Save record. Okay, that's it. We come back here. Go and hit the validate button and it didn't work yet. But again, that could be because it just takes a few minutes for the changes to actually take effect. Uh, so if you come back here in a few more minutes and click validate, you should hopefully see this switch from not validated to validated with a checkbox. Okay, if you see here, it now says validated. So we are all good to go in terms of those DNS records. Now there's a couple other things that we need to do. The first one is the SSL status. So this is processing that automatically. It's gonna enable us to change this from HTTP to HTTPS, which is a secure connection, which is gonna give us better tracking when we add that JavaScript. That might take 10 minutes to process. And then once that's done, you should be able to set it to be HTTPS by default by clicking this gear on the right hand side. And then you can also set this new tracker domain as your primary domain. And that's what I would do right now. I've got this Linux soft domain as my primary domain. Normally what you're going to see is that go.pardot.com will be the default primary domain. And once this is all validated and the SSL status is enabled, just go ahead and set your new custom domain as primary, and then you're good to go as far as setting up the tracker domain goes. So that'll do it for this video. Hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next lesson. That was a lesson from our DIY Pardot implementation course. If you'd like more videos similar to it, consider clicking the link in the description below or going to academy.rotive.io. Thanks for watching.